to a new weekly trade plan starting off with the real yield treasury curve rates looking at the 10 year yield one and I'm going to overlay it with gold just to get a better understanding where we are in a bigger picture with yields and to make the view a little bit easier I'm going to invert that scale so you may or may not know that gold is inverse correlated with real yields one way or another real yields are leading gold let's change the color to something better so the blue line are real yields inverted and the gold yellow line is gold real yields have been punching lower and lower well this is inverted chart in this chart higher and higher and gold's been somewhat in lockstep and i'm expecting this to continue so we had a good divergence here about 17th of june the yield yields were really punching higher gold was sort of dipping um and it started to gather further pace and capture some more upside i'm expecting this to continue into the coming week and throughout july as long as real yields lose more ground and for gold to possibly take out the 1800 handle right now it's trading about 1776 so expect this to continue plowing higher keeping it keeping an eye on yields as well also having a quick look at the inflation expectation so it's the five-year inflation expectation on 2nd of July it closed somewhat higher and I like to overlay this usually with my commodity currencies because they are highly correlated so if I'm looking at the Canadian dollar let's change color that's change Canadian dollar to, to red maple red there is a little bit of lag so major major moves of the Canadian dollar go hand in hand with inflation expectation but last week we saw that Canadian dollar was a little bit shy to to correct higher with the inflation expectation so expecting next week to for that to push higher with inflation expectation bear in mind that the inflation expectation chart itself seems to be at some of a resistance that hasn't been really broken since since late February so it keeps pushing back at around these levels keep that in mind but said but with that being said there is there's still a little bit more upside momentum left in the Canadian dollar and if inflation expectation starts rising further that could translate into a much stronger Canadian dollar move as well so always look at these basic core things when we enter into the new week just to understand where we are in the bigger picture as well closing these quick look at CFTC data on their own website they said they're gonna have to delay due to a federal holiday it's the 4th of July and they did not publish the COT data on last Friday they will be publishing on the 6th so we will get an update regarding positioning then that's why we won't be able to analyze it over this weekend a quick look at where we are with data economic surprise index shows there's a strong showing in the USD and the Canadian dollar where Japanese yen and euro are on the bottom of the pile so I'm looking to capture a bit more upside in Canadian dollar against euro not so much dollar against euro because right now the picture regarding the Fed is is a little bit different the Fed is pumping money and they keep intervening in the market and it makes trading dollar right now very indecisive where with the Canadian dollar they don't have as much leverage like the bigger central banks and even the liquidity they inject as many mil billions there is it really falls shy of what the ECB can bring with pumping trillions of euros into the market or the USD so going by economic surprise index you would expect the Canadian dollar to perform better against euro 
going forward and any economic and any economic data in the coming weeks will be a trigger for us to short euro cat that's something i'll be looking at going ahead so these were the key figures i am going to have a look at the weekly calendar see what lies ahead we have on the monday ism non-manufacturing pmi we're expecting strong numbers so last one was on the 3rd of june it was a surprise higher 45.4 bear in mind any number under 50 by market is still considered to be in a cons um, in in a negative territory so or in contraction and in number above 50 market takes it as as growth but as a may we're looking for growth forecast for a print on monday which should be positive for usd bear in mind trading usd right now is ex extremely difficult due to the way that fed is manipulating manipulating is the wrong word the, the the way the fed is orchestrating dollar movements and keeping price in a way that benefits everybody globally they saved trading usd on its own against the euro will be will be a little bit more difficult and i, th I think it will leave many traders disappointed especially in regards to volatility however as canadian economies closely tied to the united states any good data prints from the united states will benefit the canadian dollar too which in effect means shorting euro cat on that event as a catalyst should should play out well i'm gonna have a quick look see how market reacted to the last print so on the 3rd of june particularly looking at the euro cat see if there was any strong movements on the 3rd of june we had a good print but market sort of rallied now here's an interesting thing about that level i'm actually going to mark this out i believe that around the 1.50 level there is a exotic option which means every time market came close to it uh, it bounced strongly back regardless of what news what was happening now, the reason may be there might be exotic option an exotic option is an option where the option writer will pay will pay out or only if the price does not get knocked out so somebody who wants to protect themselves against the move below this will buy an exotic option usually in, in several billions and that means if market starts coming down that way they will try to defend their position hence you can see the sharp recoveries i'm gonna have a quick look at euro at how euro usd reacted on the 3rd of june and on the 3rd of june was still an aggressive strong positive move I'm gonna also have a look at USD cat on the 3rd of June. And the move was in favor of cat. So last time the reading was quite positive. Let's try 5th of May as well. So 5th of May we had a sort of a drop in USD cat. How about Euro cat? On the 5th of May was quite a stronger move. So that's something I would be expecting on Monday as well. A quite strong move when data from the United States is stronger. I believe on the 3rd of third of June we didn't quite get that. Mainly because of what's happening with the Options Defender. Here we're right now a bit further away from the, those dangerous level. So there is a good good reasons to believe for Yuri Cat to trade lower into the 151 level and possibly lower in the coming week using the ism as a as a catalyst to get into the trade moving on we have bsc business outlook survey this is rather important data for the canadian dollar itself it basically gives the bsc an outlook into what businesses are like what they're feeling what is their their understanding of the future and they usually react to those things as a matter of fact a couple of these bad readings prompted the bank of canada to cut rates i believe last year so it's something we look at it is not always great market movers the last one was about 6th of april it is not a huge market mover usually 
but the collective of those data, so if a, a few data of those points coming together, usually tends to give us an understanding of if there's a shift coming from the BOC. So last reading managed to push EuroCAD lower. Again, data on its own isn't a big mover. It was probably just used as a catalyst to long cat against Euro, hence that sort of fell. And it should play into our hands and what we're looking to do for the next week to move EuroCAD a wee bit lower. On Tuesday, we will have the RB a rate statement we're not expecting anything from them so last time i believe it was last week rbs had honcho low said he's not really concerned about australian dollar price levels a lot of market participants or analysts thought that he might or think he might take those words back into this meeting and we start concerns about the levels of where aud is trading there's a couple of things to consider australian dollar is trading higher I'm sure AUD is a, a major. It's trading higher, not as a result of where the Cana where the Australian economy is, but as a result of United States or the Fed government has provided trillions of US dollars into the market, where the Australian central bank, the RBA, was not able to match that. So there was a huge divergence happening since late or mid March, that's driving this pair higher. This is it's, it's key to understand that. Now, granted, the Fed has scaled back a little bit of it, but it's still in, in within the reach of nearly 100 billion a month, they're pumping money into the economy, and the RBA is far, far behind from that, matching any of this. So the dynamic of Australian dollar being higher is not really much to do with RBA, but more to do with the Fed. So even though, if analysts are right, and on Tuesday, the RBA says they are concerned about the, the level where AUD is trading, it might be a bit of a wobble, but it should not start a trend reversal, as they're essentially powerless in doing that. Another thing that's helping AUD a lot and NZD as well is Chinese economy performing exceptionally well. So they went into this recession maybe one close to two months before everybody else because the way that the pandemic worked out and the recovery started much earlier as well. And that's feeding into the Australian New Zealand economy, especially because the demand inside of China is picking up incredibly so there's a lot of infrastructure spending government understands the chinese government is understanding right now that global economies demand will not be picking up in the short term that means the chinese exports will stay low so they focused a lot on the infrastructure they focus a lot on internal demand which in in turn is causing a lot of exports exports growth from the Australia and New Zealand hence it's kind of building into the currencies as well so there's a lot of bigger factors and a comment coming from the RBA saying they're concerned about the level where AUD is trading is not going to necessarily be a game changer I'm going to show you NZD USD as well because last week I believe it was last week the RBNZ said that they are concerned with the level where NZD is trading and while it did drop it really didn't matter much. Price final leg higher again as the key drivers are something else, not what the RBNZ is saying. They have they have not enough money to fight those bigger central banks who are providing market with huge liquidities. That's the same reason and your NZD is dropping as well. So after those comments it went up a bit, but essentially caps dropping because the reasons I just mentioned there. That's one thing to consider going to RBD. There's another thing I'd like you to look at going to RB, RBA meeting, which is what market is expecting in terms of rate cuts. And right now, I can see that market is expecting for that meeting to be a 40% no change and 60% expecting a rate cut, which is a little bit out of order, to be honest, and which should also cause for AUD to jump on that day as they gonna get disappointed. So basically the market is thinking there's a there's over 50% chance of a rate cut, something that has not been communicated, something which is a little bit out of reason right now, which should leave market participants covering the AUD shorts, if any, and driving AUD higher on that day. Something to consider. My, my bet would be 
possibly a higher a lower euro AUD to take out those recent lows with your trigger being on that Tuesday ADUSD itself could possibly find another leg back into this level now, I've marked out this level because it's very interesting to me AUDUSD topped after the last FOMC meeting which was on the 10th of June and it was quite significant because the Fed made it clear that they are not looking to pump any more money into into the market substantially they did not give the green light for the yield curve control so there was a lot of things saying that we are not aggressively devaluing USD at the moment and that caused the pair to drop actually caused USD to rally so my understanding is if price should on Tuesday or before Tuesday even start rallying back into those levels where FOMC made that announcement I don't think we're gonna see a sustained move ab above that so if you do tend to even break those higher highs I am thinking about a fate I will have a better understanding once we're closer on to the day again trading UST extremely difficult right now because of the dynamics that have been created but your understanding is a higher AUD UST right now at this point is less likely another thing that we uh, interesting to consider is the yearly open of AUD USD was around the same level, which has been rejected, which is about the 70 cents level. I'm thinking, I'm anticipating a further rejection once we get closer to that level again. As a sustained move above that needs a, needs a bit more reasoning. Again, the whole move behind here was exceptional outperformance of the Chinese economy, and it was a lot of Federal Reserve pumping trillions of US dollars. Right now, there is not. Um, right now, there is not aggregately happening anymore. So you should expect a little bit more chop to downside coming further. There's some to consider. Going further down the news calendar, there is nothing particularly eye-catching. We have Fed members speaking. There is something we will be looking at through the day. And see how market reacts if there's any particular remarks we have EU economic forecast interestingly on last week the head of ECB said that inflation expected to be negative territory for a couple of years so I would expect the EU economic forecast to not give us any more bright spots if anything if any good news comes out of that I'm expecting euro to be faded especially against the pair I would like to short it next week. So we're going to see any up movement on here on EuroCAT. I'm really looking for a fade if any news is going to come out of that. Mainly because of what ECB said. They're looking for negative inflation for a couple of years, which is a really, really bad outcome for the euro itself. We've got Anne Binson's confidence. Have a quick look, see what happened last time they produced that report, because I can't really remember personally. June 30th. We we'll have a look against Euro NZD as is, that's the pair I'm more interested in into the following week, June thirtieth. June thirtieth produced a down day and the one before it was the ninth of June, which produced an a strong up day. Some some to look at once we are closer on to that date on the Thursday, how NZD will be reacting to that. We have Eurogroup meetings. We'll be understanding what they what they will be talking about. It's possibly they will be laboring the point further on Euro bonds. They could, in one way or another, be Euro positive. So when I'm shorting Euro into Thursday, I'll be mindful of that. There will be moves going against me. or if possibly that happens a lot euro might be falling already aggressively into that day i will not be looking to add or establish new positions as the possibility of euro making a jump on positive euro meeting um news or comments that would be that would be against um that would be unfavorable shorting into it basically lastly something i'm interested in is the unemployment rate for the canadian dollar and that should play in my hands where I'm looking for really strong outperformance of the Canadian economy. 
I'm looking for both Eurocat short further and USD cat as well. That's that USD cat. I'm looking for USD cat to to drop lower and on Friday to give it a further boost. I believe last time the reading wasn't that attractive. No, actually it was a little bit better than expected. The 5th of June, see how market reacted to that. And we had a really strong down move. Keep in mind, last Thursday, I believe it was, we had we had the NFP, which printed really strong. And surprisingly to a lot of people, USD can't drop again. Now keep in mind, if US economy is doing well, Canadian economy is doing well, and that's dragging US to cat lower. So I'm expecting, there's a swath of news, but I'm expecting Canadian dollar to perform better. There's a better ISM coming. I'm expecting USD cat to drop and USD cat to drop. BOC business confidence or the outlook is another trigger. And then finally on Friday, the employment gauge is supposed to give it another leg lower. There's a lot to like for the Canadian dollar to go into the next week. Um, putting everything together, so we had a look at the inflation expectations. It puts Canadian dollar in favor again. Um, we had indices somewhat sm uh, moving strongly, finishing the week on a strong note. So N NQ and the Dow Jones, they've all been positive more or less. And there's a lot to like for the Canadian dollar going into the next week. I'm not going to show you oil right now. I'm not going to too much get into the oil because the correlation between cat and oil has been somewhat disjointed, mainly because oil hasn't been moving anywhere lately. So it won't be my key focus going to next week. It will be more those data releases, a stronger US economy, feeding into a stronger Canadian dollar as well. That wraps up this week. Hope you enjoyed this and see what next week will bring us. Thank you very much.